so very now you, you can expect being fired upon and then suddenly these guys see uh, the entire place is completely riddled with bullet then they open up full blast with machine guns and with uh, where this lathors they like the multi grenade launchers that we have they go they, they, they throw grenades and that go and pass and then pure patte gir raha part 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 everywhere and there is a rpg round oh <laughs> and we up there and upar se expect kar rahe hain and uh, somehow we went and uh, we were successful we got success and we cleared the entire place but point is yeah so wahan jo sikhaya jata tha that is good for marksmanship when you are firing in olympics but when you are in combat you need to be aware of the situation around you you need to be somebody is thrown a grenade somebody has got up from there or you see somebody moving or running from there and you suddenly see there is some, so you can close your eyes you can go and strike them and you have lived with the militants <laughs> you mean yes, literally I, I, living in their camps and uh, been with yeah, them i have you're so jovial it's very difficult to feel that you know you're a commander you don't come across as a commando like the feeling oh, that I commando don't. i mean the word gives <laughs> is that they are very intimidating you don't come across so okay all right you want me to get on a show like that no <laughs> 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 no uh, how are you doing oh. otherwise very good very good thank you so much uh tell me about your new venture let's start there grave oak yeah uh, we have you started yes it's already recording uh, did did you get the yeah, message yeah sorry yeah 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 i did but i i wasn't sure i thought it was a normal chit chat it's okay it's okay it's actually yeah that's fine i did not want to keep it very formal so yep okay. yeah so uh, i was actually joking <laughs> in the initial <laughs> part so the grave oak um, it it stands for wolf is a wolf and uh, wolf is generally associated world over with uh, special forces so it's a team of special forces and uh, we started off as uh, offering uh, world class and uh, most elite uh, security services including consultancy and uh, for those elite people who ever need it and who have, can actually afford it so <laughs> it is like that but uh, we are just starting with uh, two new ventures and Uh, this is from the environment taking a feedback and uh, we realize it's time to give back so these are two uh, ventures that i'm very personally excited about uh, first is a uh, lot of people have reached out on social media uh, to uh, they want guidance on joining the forces on motivation i realize that this is a gap in the society at the moment especially uh, for the people who are joining uh, as as jawans be it as a agni veer be it uh, crpf bsf or uh, the police services uh, this uh, this uh, strata of the society uh, they are exploited you will not believe it they end up paying unnecessarily money to people whereas in no bharti you can actually get to a bharti anywhere get recruited uh, paying money but these people are exploited. bribing literally right uh, yes bribing it doesn't work out you you can't actually bribe your way through into the forces no way none of the forces but then this they are innocent people they are from the villages they don't know and uh, we actually uh, starting a school where we start uh, training these people and have them focused and this is in one manner give back to the society where we can train them and have a good manpower in the forces that is first and the second one is again uh, pretty interesting i found it uh, very uh, we close to my heart and it's it's like uh, it's it's uh, we paying back to the teachers uh, from whom we have actually learned everything it's a simple uh, software platform that we have formed and which has been successful uh, as in it is uh, it was made by a friend of mine navin daya and yeah and he made it for sadguru and it has worked well with sadguru's uh, entire team as they've been using that it is uh, to give a platform to anybody who wants to do a coaching or a training like tomorrow you feel that you are good in uh, let's say uh, you good at a particular like let's say you want to uh, teach uh, mouth organ so you want to run classes for mouth organ how do you start you first of all you need a website 
then uh, you need to market your product you need people to reach out they, they should see your product and then you need to uh, configure an entire studio or your classes to how your classes are going to be so in our platform you can place everything you can put everything there and we help you market that product and when people reach out to you it uh, how do they make the payment uh, say you have got about 20 vacancies uh, so how do they make the payment uh, at the moment they'll keep paying your upi and then you keep checking ki kiska payment hai and who's paid who is not paid and keep maintaining on it so all of these uh, back end operations we can handle and uh, help anyone who uh, wants to do some kind of a coaching or uh, training it, it could be anything it could be anything right from uh, leadership training it could be uh, training in cyber security art classes music classes and uh, uh, also martial art uh, or uh, unarmed combat uh, classes uh, we have a special who have uh, friends uh, uh, dr vicky kapoor uh, yeah so yeah with him uh, we are in discussions and we are trying to uh, make a special product for the the martial art federation the world united martial art federation that sounds really good actually the first one even more where you said uh, you'll be helping out soldiers and you know uh, uh, teenagers yeah. and others who want to join the forces uh, this is a very common question that that we keep getting when it comes to uh, the forces and that is what is that attitude that makes a commando Uh, I I read somewhere your attitude decides your altitude. It's a beautiful saying. <laughs> your uh, uh, attitude decides your altitude. How high you rise in your life, wherever you are, uh, that is generally decided by your attitude. That I believe is very personal. So okay, coming back to the commando thing, uh, uh, to set the context right, you must understand what a commando is. Yeah, I'm sure you do. You you from the forces, so. i consider whoever is a second generation forces they are they are more fogy than we are because they have grown into the system <laughs> yeah that's not true so <laughs> so commando is uh, a commando is first of all a very motivated guy to join any of the commando forces anyway be the police commando forces be the army commando forces be the special forces be the energy he has to be a volunteer yeah and anybody it goes beyond behind uh, uh, without saying ki everybody knows ki ragda bahut lagne wala hai everybody is going to really get rogered when you offer a commando pose because they will pull you apart yet somebody motivated enough to opt for a come on volunteering for a commando force itself it says a lot about uh, his personality you see that he is first of all he is not ready to undertake or he is ready not ready to face odds he is willing he is volunteering to go and join that force he knows when he joins that force he is going to be uh, he is going to be exposed to all the dangers jaise hote na like uh, when i join the special forces uh, whenever there is a news of anything uh, untoward happening anywhere and my parents knew ki uh, caution has to be there because so it's like that whenever there is something odd happening there is some operation happening and uh, you know you have to go there so opting or volunteering for that But these guys it's a good one after that anything happening <laughs> your parents were aware you were there yeah they are always aware ki okay manipur mein ye ho gaya to caution must be there now something has happened in arunachal um, i'm sure he is moved and so he'll be out of communication for 3 uh, 4 days and it's like that so they knew something has happened in silchar we, we were in silchar and i really uh, didn't have to tell them <laughs> where we were <laughs> so yeah so coming back to these commandos not just it doesn't end with the volunteering it just starts with the volunteering they volunteer for that service after that they go one of the most rigorous of the training selection i would say first to start with the selection they undergo one of the most rigorous of the selection procedures where everything i mean they are tested their mental faculties that's most important the will power the physical of course he has to be supreme in his physical prowess which i believe is a flaw out of your mental uh, uh, your mental strength and then they are trained and after that they are trained and they they know what uh, they are exposed to uh, what they are being trained for and they are being prepared for so uh, the attitude i would say once you have completed all this is ande as it is said <laughs> that may sound to be very crude but it is like yeah let it come let it come 
whatever comes, uh, we are ready to handle it. I mean, that's the kind of attitude uh, people have. But most of these people, most of these people, and I personally feel that it's the hard work that beats talent in the long run. I'm a firm believer of this. It is all hard work, hard work, and hard work. If you keep working hard and if you're focused and you wish to uh, work hard, uh, you can achieve anything, be it a commando, be it uh, thereafter uh, getting success in your operations or not. So it is more uh, very important for uh, uh, for the commandos to believe in hard work. We don't believe in luck. And yes, uh, details of getting into a plan. And I, I hope I have been able to answer your Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it made complete sense to me because anyone who's left the forces also, they're doing pretty well, you know. So when you say hard work over t talent, it, it makes sense to me. Absolutely. Um, it, so, you know, uh, people do get confused between special forces, Rashtra rifles, and then, of course, they're the infantry guys. How will you explain the difference between the three? I mean, I have personally heard RR mm. guys are trigger freaks <laughs> and, and <laughs> SF guys are more strategic. I, how, how true is it? No, no, I, I would say that RR guys, uh, okay, I'll, 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 I'll start with the story. The story is uh, when two countries go to war, it is the paddles and other forces, the infantry, infantry should play chess. The, the, the uh, pawns, it's called. The yeah, smallest the soldiers. character, yeah, the foot soldiers, they, they are infantry. Uh, nothing against the infantry. In fact, they, they are the queen of the battle. And uh, when two forces fight, it is the infantry that gets into a head to head where they actually have to charge the target and all. They, they actually had to charge, take out your bayonets, go charge, get into a bunker and kill the enemy. So that's what the infantry does. Everybody else, it's uh, generally in some manner or the other, they're supporting the infantry. It's the armored guys who. If uh, the tank, if the area where armored vehicles can move, they go with armored. Then there are mechanized guys who are mounted on similar looking like tanks. They are called the BMPs, uh, ICVs, infantry air combat vehicles, where they are mounted and they go inside and they after they, they get down and they behave like infantry. These are artillery guys. Artillery guys are from behind. They bombard the entire area and they prepare the uh, the, the target in this manner that. Uh, the infantry can go and they have an easy run over the target. The engineers, they were the first ones to go inside. They clear the minefields. And after, once you get inside, how does your supply come? How, uh, where do you get your water from? They have to create uh, bridges and all. So it's, this is how uh, war happens. Special forces are the guys who are dropped behind enemy lines. Yeah, but when the two armies are fighting like this, you're dropped behind the enemy lines and you're uh, there in a very uh, short uh, to summarize, you're there to create havoc so that the enemy is unable to focus in the war ahead and they, they are more looking back, ki, yaha to nahi aage, yaha to nahi aage. is this the special forces, have they blown up this, have they uh, targeted this particular infrastructure, we just, that's the idea, keep them so busy behind so that they are unable to focus in the war ahead and uh, the infantry we, we are all in the shaping operations, it is called. We create the environment where the infantry can actually come and uh, win the battles. So special forces, uh, the we have to be, uh, we generally operate you behind enemy lines. You cannot, uh, you cannot be large in strength. Just four to six people who go inside, operate there. We do all uh, type of um, operations. It could be to target uh, nuclear installations. It could be to target their missile sites. It could be anything that will have a strategic kind of effect. You see, it, it, it has to have a strategic impl uh, implication. Only then it's worth the risk of going deep inside there. So uh, I've generally answered what infantry is and what uh, special forces Russia are. Russia right? rifles and yeah. Yeah, Russia rifles is a uh, very good equalizer where uh, because we're dealing with this insurgency thing in uh, Jammu and Kashmir for a very long time. So we realized that okay, uh, infantry gets... Uh, Infantry, the prime is to prepare for a war. It should not get embroiled with uh, these dynamics of fighting a counter insurgency because it takes a toll on yourself. There are so many infantry units in peacetime, you're going and fighting here, and then you're deployed uh, on, along the front lines. And where they, you need to prepare for how do you fight across a ditch compound? How do you fight across a canal? So it takes a toll on you, right? 
because uh, you're not getting a break anywhere uh, you uh, you are it's it's like you are preparing for your primary goal when you are uh, in your break like ci you're fighting actual militants and then you take a break and then you talking about fighting in the deserts or talking about fighting in the mountains or talking about fighting in the uh, across a canal so there is the force which was a mix of everybody like the artillery guys the engineer guys the the infantry guys everybody would come there and operate for two years even the signal guys everybody would come there operate for two uh, two years and this entire force would be committed towards uh, countering insurgents they have got a benefit in terms of uh, infantry unit when it goes for operations it goes there for two years and then it moves out once it moves out all the sources that they have built all the background information that they have uh, collected the entire patterns that they have studied everything goes out with them this mm-hmm. this care what one and a half months of handing taking over in whatever manner it, uh, they have been able to communicate to the next battalion but rashi rifle was a the force multiplier it is going to be permanent there you see that the troops get rotated yeah. you have come today you are there for two years and then you go somebody has so there is always a set of older people who are there who are teaching the young ones and uh, the kind of sources that you make uh, they are good that is retained you can hand over like i'm if i'm leaving before two months before that i hand over to somebody else and then he starts uh, reaching out to them all the background uh, information and knowledge everything is there so uh, that's what rashid rifle is and uh, they actually uh, is a very well thought out uh, thing and uh, they have they have been uh, crucial in uh, getting the valley under control right right uh you have also commanded nsd unit uh when you came to 21 para sf and then when you moved to nsd what was the difference there because uh, nsd again is very different from special forces though they're also black cat commanders Oh, I also got a question. Why are they called Black Cat Commandos, and why not Black Panthers? Why not Jaguars? <laughs> they're they're all the same family. It's uh, the same family, and uh, Black Cat because of the the stealth. Yeah, I'm sure even the Panther is. But they are all part of the family, and we respect that family. It's not a domestic cat. Uh, that I'm sure you have at home. <laughs> that that should not come to your mind. these guys right. are so really, so how is nsd different from 21 para sf so the special forces that i was trying to uh, i was uh, explaining to you that uh, goes behind the enemy lines and uh, disrupts everything there and that is a war time scenario uh, for that kind of a force uh, special forces are there now if there is an attack here in uh, like a mumbai attacks the 2611 attacks so special forces can respond to it but then special forces are always committed special forces guy like i was telling you wherever there was a problem we were deployed there if if there's a bomb blast there was probably there if there's a insurgency activity something somewhere else has happened a community being targeted we have moved there so special forces guys are all always deployed and always committed to operations and suddenly there is a strike like the 2611 who responds sf guys are already out on operation they are not uh, they didn't know this is going to happen and they already committed who responds so energy is a force like that it's, it's a national contingency force yeah I, i hope i'm audible yeah yeah you're audible you're audible yeah so it's the national contingency force if there is a terrorist attack anywhere especially in the urban areas because urban terrorism is a different uh, is a very specialized and a different kind of a which the normal special forces of course they are good they can handle any situation and we have uh, and there's so much of focus on uh, uh, fighting in a room uh, to room inter- room intervention and uh, urban combat but yet uh, if you're always talking about room combat and you're always talking about urban warfare your jungle operations are going to suffer your desert operations are going to suffer you see that you can specialize in something so that is what the specialized the special forces specialize in if it is committed to the desert it is committed to the desert you can't beat him in the desert then para is the mountain that's completely that, that is what the para special forces are so energy is someone which is committed to urban warfare to urban combat and combat against terrorism that is why uh, energy was raised and 
the main role of energy is wherever there is a terrorist attack of any kind they are the ones for them there is a aircraft always on standby standing there wherever they are there is a aircraft on standby we have our own special gates from where we just reach inside it's i can go into uh, details uh, but then everything is set i won't tell you in what time frame but it's like this and uh, anything guys are is so professional trust me at least four to five times a week it is practiced it's not just about moving out it's moving out with all your load and gear and because when you move out you don't even know what kind of a terrorist attack has happened so you move out with every damn thing and they figure out okay this is this we'll handle it like this this is this we'll handle it like this how much and time are you given let's say like there's an attack how much time do you think your boys will be ready like they are always ready they is always ready i'll i'll, I'll like i should not mention a time it it okay uh, even by, uh, when i was commanding 10 minutes is too large i would flog anybody who would take 10 minutes to get <laughs> that's on the light side 10 minutes is huge i i won't let i won't wait for 10 minutes i am always impatient for combat specially so guys are out before that so you ever met captain sandeep in question Major no, Sandeep, no, I'm. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, sad. Uh, I could not. Uh, he's a legend, and uh, I mean, uh, we can only salute the hero and the kind of work that he's done. And uh, he's one man who's going to continue to inspire generations. And uh, we really uh, no words to express the kind of sacrifice that he's made and the kind of uh, operations that he's led. Uh, He'll be he became the face of and NSD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very sad that uh, we lost him. He is a hero, no doubt. He is a hero. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I, uh, I was picked up for command much later, and uh, I commanded so much later. You don't have to be sorry. You don't have to be sorry. <laughs> okay, just no, I feel bad when uh, I've not been able to uh, interact or meet or take lessons from a or from a legend like that. And yeah. understandable why are 21 para so guys called wagnak shivaji's wagnak why and how did it come to get associated and uh, do you like uh, so um, you know very less is known about 21 para sf as such nine para sf ke bare mein sab jante hain because they are in the valley then there are 10 para sf the desert scorpions 21 para sf sir ye log american exercise mein kabhi kabhi dikhte hain आप लोग करते क्या हैं लाइक व्हाई द वागनक एंड हाउ डू यू एसोसिएट दैट जंगल वॉरफेयर व्हाट हैपेंस आई आई हैव लॉट ऑफ रिस्पेक्ट फॉर ऑल द स्पेशल फोर्सेस आई मीन नॉट जस्ट नाइन पैरा सेफ टेन पैरा सेफ तो मतलब दे आर अगेन द बेस्ट ऑफ द गाइस आफ्टर 21 ऑफ कोर्स बट बट नहीं नहीं दैट्स दैट्स ऑन द लाइटर साइड आई हैव लॉट ऑफ रिस्पेक्ट फॉर ऑल द स्पेशल फोर्सेस सो व्हाटएवर आई से आई आई होप इट डजंट इट्स नॉट हेल्ड अगेंस्ट एनीवन एंड इट्स द मैक्सिमम लर्निंग्स दैट वी हैव हैड इज व्हेन ऑल द एसएम गाइस कम टुगेदर व्हिच मींस वन पैरा टू पैरा थ्री पैरा फोर पैरा नाइन पैरा ट्वेल्व पैरा इलेवन पैरा ऑल ऑफ दिस व्हेन वी गेट टुगेदर द मैक्सिमम लर्निंग्स इज बिकॉज़ दे आर इन देयर ओन फील्ड दे डू समथिंग एल्स somebody else uh, has uh, got their own lessons from something else that they did and we come together and that's the best bonding and there's the best kind of uh, lessons that we learn from each other and we've got a very healthy competition kisne kitne zyada successes kiye hain so that keeps so us going so can you give me an example um i don't know if that uh, exactly fits into uh, as an example but when we were commissioned i had opted for nine pairs Yeah, yeah, I did because uh, that was the time when nine pairs of was at its. Uh, they were doing very well. They are still doing well, but uh, that is the time we had just known about nine pair and ten pair. I, I just, I, I can't get into the deserts. That was the least on my go. <laughs> so I realized, okay, if we are opting for special forces, let's opt for the best. Twenty-one pair as of wasn't the best then, and uh, it is just. it was a new race unit and we were just raised from uh, 21 maratha line in fact that is why we are affiliated to the maratha regiment and that is why we have the wagnak as our uh, most revered group and uh, we call ourselves wagnak wagnak is something that shivaji used 
to kill uh, Afzal Khan. Yeah, so, so what I was saying was, yeah, so uh, it, is, uh, it is a matter of uh, pride or uh, something for us, uh, our, our generation to boast that once we joined 21 Para SF, after that we have been through, we have seen that entire part where 21 actually emerged to be one of the finest unit of uh, the country. In one of the uh, one of the investigation, we just had an investigation ceremony very shortly. Uh, a lot of uh, things going on yes. on the social media. And, and, and in the, the comment section, one of the guys, your 21 Para SF commander was getting comments like, he's built like a tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, almost Vijay, all of you are. You, you, you so uh, 21 Para SF also has a gym culture, is it? Uh, I'm not into gym, but we do have a Doesn't fitness culture. Like. Yes, okay. uh, uh, no, no, it, uh, it's all body weight training and uh, it's uh, calisthenics, and there's much more than a, than a name to it. Calisthenics is, uh, I, I, I don't uh, lift up any weight. And yes, there is a gym culture and there is a culture of, as I said, it's culture of fitness. And uh, thanks to our seniors, right from uh, Brigadier Shikhawat and uh, his generation and uh, Agarwal sir and Major Bhupendra Dhamanka, everybody in 21, we used to actually hit the gym whenever we come back from operations. And yeah, so uh, just before that, I missed out. Uh, there's a point I was trying to drive was that uh, where he said 21 para emerged as one of the finest units. In one of the investitures, we had five Shorya Jagras, we had nine Sena medals, and we have we had about 12 odd come chief commendation cards. So that was the kind of impact when suddenly we moved into Manipur and Manipur was a liberated zone. At that time, all being run, most part of it uh, by the militants, and it, it was a good run for us where we went all out and we had a lot of success, a lot of lessons to learn and that's why we did well. So uh, that was the example that I was trying to give you about uh, 21 Paraso. Was, <laughs> was this the Loktak uh, operation? No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was before that. It was before that. Yeah, yeah. So, much later. Loktak was much later. By Loktak, we had we got so fed up looking for militants, militants, militants. Okay, they all <laughs> had run away and Loktak is one place where these guys never thought that uh, somebody can come and strike them there. And that is the kind of thing that uh, fascinates us or that excites us. Just sitting right uh, in front of, we could see them, we observed them for good about 45 days. It's all there in media. For 45 days we saw them and they were so, uh, what is that called, complacent. They thought uh, the army cannot strike them. And nobody can come because uh, they were they were on those floating islands. It's called Fumdi. The floating islands, the islands keep moving around. And uh, the army, all the army could do was uh, we had those big boats. I'm sure you would have seen those boats, inflatable boats, and all that. That's that has got a OBM motor. That motor moves it. This uh, noise that comes when you switch on the motor. If you switch, do not switch on the motor. That's, that's a huge thing. I mean, it's as wide as maybe uh, three feet white and you can't take it anywhere and so these guys are pretty confident that the army cannot come if the army comes the, these boats uh, the, nobody can ride those boats and trust me we trained the entire day Shekhoza was leading that operation and Shekhoza is uh, Brigadier Shekhawat Brigadier Shekhawat <laughs> was leading that operation he's done amazing he's pulled out an amazing feat even uh, now as deputy commandant of horse is uh, been able to, yeah, we'll talk about it maybe later. But the entire day, early morning, you get up and up throughout the team would be in water, just trying to master how to ride up this uh, small boats like they're like the kayaks. I'm sure you know what a kayak is. This what, boats, and what is it called, sir? What unki jo boat hoti it's, hai, like, it's, boat? it's called a he, he, H W -E, he. Yeah, and whole day we would be in water trying to, and first time somebody uh, gets up on it, you can't be there for more than a minute. I mean, you just topple off. Even if you're not trying any monkey trick, you'll just topple off. That's uh, so difficult to balance out. But in some time, we were teaching the locals there how to ride a heat. We had become so damn proficient. And that, I believe, is all about uh, what 
uh, maybe the attitude of special forces that we started off with. And we trained, trained, trained the entire day in the night till we are dead tired, just go off and fall asleep. And some of them even without changing because you're wet the entire day. You know, wet dress, wet clothes. And uh, that's how uh, we had to improvise so many things. Uh, we don't even think, uh, have you fired a weapon? Assault rifle. Right <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Even if you, you, whenever you fire something, there's a thrust, there's a hit back. Yeah, it, it pushes you back and that's how the bullet... The recoil, head. right? The recoil, yeah, that's the word, recoil. So the recoil, we don't even think of uh, the recoil because you're, you're standing on your feet. That's why you have your feet apart and when you're firing, it just takes that recoil and you keep... On water, that recoil has got such a huge effect because you're not on firm ground. First bullet, the second bullet would go somewhere else. So we had to improvise so many things to uh, actually prepare for that. Uh, the execution was nothing compared to the kind of trainings that we had done. So... Execution was a cakewalk, you mean? Execution... I, I, I feel so, execution... Uh, if it if things have been planned well, execution is normally a cakewalk. So, and how long did it last? Eight minutes? Natha. The actual firefight, it hardly lasted. We just, yeah, the actual firefight hardly lasted. Right. Um, you've been talking a lot about planning and strategizing. You said it's a cakewalk when it is planned and strategized well. Can you tell me what kind of preparation? I mean, look, the Kapne Bataya, you were literally in water. So, jungle may kuchri ho sakta hai from, you know, uh, like, I've heard stories of a surgical strike inside Pakistan when they were literally carrying leopards, uh, you know, this thing so that to keep the dogs away and all that. Uh, and in your Myanmar strike, apparently, uh, there were hunters who spotted the commandos and then you had to keep mm -hmm. the hunters. Any incident with you during the jungle warfare? And how do you plan and strategize for such unexpected situations? There are standard uh, things. I said that I uh, this uh, being spotted by your entire operation actually fails if you're being spotted as special forces. Yeah, un unless there's somebody one rare thing and uh, he sees you and uh, uh, you make him sit with you, and there's no network uh, so that he, um, he has not been able to communicate with anyone. So it, you can still maybe go ahead with the operation. Otherwise. There's no use going ahead if you've been spotted by anyone. Yeah, maybe like the Myanmar strikes worked out well because those hunters did not have a mobile. They were just caught and they were made to sit with us. We interacted with them. These things do happen and you have to exploit. These are fleeting opportunities that you need to exploit. Something has happened, just exploit that. It's a good thing that has happened. It happened once with me. Uh, this is not part of the planning and strategy, but uh, I'll uh, narrate to you. These guys are again very good. Northeast may... Guys are very good. Yeah. So we were moving at night uh, and just before it was getting uh, daylighted, we saw a place and we found a place just okay, decent, and we just tucked in ourselves. And uh, we were like, nobody should see us. We were walking on a track, much away from the track, and all we hid ourselves. And uh, the entire day we just kept there, waiting, observing, and doing surveillance over the entire place. And uh, sometime in the evening at about 3, 3.30, you know, one of us found a guy between our camp on a tree. That guy was sitting there the entire time. He was a hunter. He, he was a Chakma hunter. Chakmas are what those guys it? who were settled. Chakma is a tribe. Uh, they are all from uh, Bangladesh. And they were brought and given a place at a particular place. There are different areas and in a number of places in Arunachal and all you find them. So that guy was so good. He was actually sitting on a tree without moving and the special forces guys all around and we had not seen that guy. <laughs> and just imagine the daylight would have been what, 4.35 in the morning there. Uh, and from there, good about uh, nine, ten hours, that guy was sitting there without being spotted. And 
right in our camp, <laughs> in uh, wherever we had uh, taken a halt. So, so these guys are very good. They can actually, uh, and uh, he had he had a weapon that he had made himself. Um, your uh, water pipe uh, in your house. So that water pipe, he had cut it at different places. It made a small hole. It made a, a hammer, and he made uh, uh, balls to fire himself. And with the charge and all gunpowder, that is a homemade thing, weapon that he had made. So it reminds me <laughs> in Japan, the Japanese PM was uh, killed by a self-made weapon. Shinzo Abe. No, no, we we kept him. Uh, yeah, Shinzo Abe. We kept him with ourselves, uh, with us. He took us uh, and the entire operation. Uh, that wasn't a very successful operation. I mean, we did not get much success, but otherwise, that was a decent operation that we had gone for. And uh, yes, we kept him throughout. We were discussing this with the uh, planning of an operation. Again, an audience question. It was like, um, you know, uh, can you share, this is the exact question that was asked, can you share an example of a time you had to make critical decision under pressure? And how does leadership within the special forces differ from other military units? Uh, do you want to combine both questions and answer or do you want to answer the first part? Because I think you no, answered part, the second part. Yeah. I, I already, the second part is answered, so it's good. <laughs> so I'll attempt the first one. The first one is a personal example. A uh, lot of time, uh, you're not even thinking. In fact, I have had a bad experience with this myself. Uh, and that was as uh, just three months into Special Forces and six months after I had got commission, I have a gunshot wound in an operation. And uh, I've made a lot of, I've, I generally don't uh, talk about this. Uh, and I will try and avoid uh, the major part of it <laughs> today also. <coughs> But yes, uh, there were important lessons that I got. And the most important lesson that I got is uh, I was, I was uh, though there was a senior officer also, uh, an officer senior to me, but because I, I was planning the entire operation, I was executing it, I was there at the hem of everything and I was trying to coordinate. Things uh, did not go well right from the beginning. And we had to respond to different things. Somebody had escaped, something had happened, either whether kuch kuch ho ra tha and things like that. I had to respond to those. And I was, uh, I knew the entire story. I knew, I knew the entire thing, everything that is happening. But when I was communicating, I assumed, because I was in a hurry to express something, I had to respond, I had to run somewhere, I had to do something. Yeah, there, there was some kind of fire happening. So, uh, when I was uh, passing the instructions, those instructions were not complete. So the people who were listening to me, they did not get the entire picture and they were confused with Ho Kya Rai. This was a very important lesson that I got very early in Ho that uh, communication plays a very vital role, especially in crisis and especially for leaders. As a leader, you're communicating, and if you have not been able to communicate clearly, if you've not been able to uh, uh, convey the message or the intent of what is exactly happening and what you are required to do, there's going to be chaos, and chaos happened. So, <laughs> and we got our lessons there, and uh, uh, that that was a personal example of uh, that was a that was a negative kind of thing where we learned this and. Uh, after that, once you go out on operation, you train, you plan and you train. You train so many times and so many contingencies, whatever can happen to you. You're walking on a trail, somebody fires, somebody fires from ahead. How do you respond? Somebody fires from the right, somebody fires from the left. All of you have fallen into a, uh, into a, uh, into a nala. How do you extricate them? There's fire coming from this side. How do you communicate? Yeah, you, you maybe you've just halted for some time and then somebody uh, raids you, somebody comes and uh, assaults you there. How do you respond to that? So you play so many contingencies again and again and again and again. In all likelihood, none of this contingency is going to play, play out. In all likelihood, trust me. If you've planned for 10 contingencies, it's the 11th one that is going to happen. But what happens? 
is when you have been preparing for this there is a communication that is established you know precisely uh, the, the team knows precisely what is to be done without you even having to com uh, communicate or give as many orders i hope i have been able to explain that yeah yeah you see yeah, yeah. because you you are training you are preparing for so many different things so many different things you understand the intent kya hai kaise hota hai saap kaise sochte hai ye kaise sochta hai ye kaise respond karta hai and then when the actual thing happens you say something and this guy just speak up acha absolutely uh, ever lost a man in an operation god has been very kind not in the operations uh, where i have uh, been we have lost uh, but not directly in a operation where i have been there we uh, yeah well, that's fine not that's, in, that sounds uh, good that's that's we good. we uh, we take a lot of effort to plan an operation in that kind of a manner where it does not happen if it happens that's like an extreme rule and uh, i i am i'm not saying i'm taking credit for anything something but god has been very kind i have not uh, had that opportunity i won't uh, say opportunity no, uh, <laughs> no i'll use your line only you said we don't believe in luck so if you've uh, yeah. not had such encounters it's because you planned well so hats off sir uh, another thing that i wanted to ask uh, this is a rumor that i keep hearing uh, i mean i pick up ki aap logon ko jana easy hota hai it is the extraction part which is difficult is it true kisi operation yeah. mein jana वापस आना ज़्यादा डिफिकल्ट होता है। कैन यू स्पेशली स्पेशली इफ़ इफ़ सक्सेस। सक्सेस, सक्सेस ओह। वंस यू गो, क्लासिक इज़ अ कैंप समवेयर। यू गेट इंफॉर्मेशन हाउ डू यू गेट इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ अ कैंप समबडी हु हैज समवेयर बीन इधर ही इज बीन टू दैट कैंप और इज बीन वेरी क्लोज टू दैंप और ही इज हर्ड देर इज अ कैंप देर so pehle to hum planning ke liye we sit down and for days we would just sit down train start get our maps google images and if we have even drones and uh, satellite images we take out everything we study the terrain we sit with those guys and we try and understand kaha exactly hai because jis raste se this guy has gone and seen the camp if you go along the same road you will end up in an ambush fir marenge jis raste se A civilian can go and see a camp of a militant. If you walk along the same, you will get, you will get ambushed, no? Because yes. the militant is not an idiot. He he, it's a survival for him. So we we can't take that route because that route is just a no go. Because that is where somebody else has gone and seen the camp. You can't. So you have to figure out ki exactly hai kahan pe. Then you generally have an idea ki okay, this is the area that you need to go. So you go from a place where उसके माँ बाप दादा दादी नो बडी कैन इवन इमेजिन इन देर वाइल्डेस्ट ऑफ ड्रीम्स दिस कम फ्रॉम हियर इफ देर इफ देशन हियर आई शुड नॉट बी टेलिंग ऑल दिस ट्राइड अवॉइड ऑल आई एम गोइंग टू से वी टेक बिकॉज दैट गाई स्मार्ट बट वी आर स्मार्टर दैट गाई स्मार्ट हीज गोइंग टू कवर इफ देर आर थ्री ट्रैक्स लीडिंग टू हिस कैम्प दे ऑल्सो नीड टू बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन सिविलियंस हु फेरी देयर लोड्स Staying in a jungle, you need food, water, ration, and all that. Somebody comes. So wherever these people come, these areas are under watch. Either they have got their uh, their faithfuls who, who are watching over that, the overground work uh, workers who are watching that. They've got their informers, or some of them, which is very well, they'll be uh, sitting on ambush there. So that is just a no go. Then you analyze where exactly that is there, and then you go inside. From an area, that area I'm not saying is going to be easy because if it is easy, then I'm sure he will be keeping a watch on it. So we'll go from a difficult uh, stretch. Now we go and we've got a huge success. Mm -hmm. If there's a camp of let's say fifteen ten, so it's difficult to kill all fifteen ten. And uh, we have gone to areas where there are hundred hundred militants all together. As I was mentioning, Manipur was kind of a liberated zone. They were running. रिक्रूटमेंट रैलीज दे वर रनिंग मेडिकल कैंप मेडिकल कैंप फौज कराती है आजकल दे वर रनिंग मेडिकल कैंप जस्ट इमेजिन देर स्ट्रेंथ दे वर इन ह्यूज नंबर्स डिफरेंट डायनेमिक्स ऑल टू गेटर बट देन सो इफ यू गॉन देर यू स्टक ए कैंप नाउ यू गॉट 
you have to get back the bodies also ab dikhana bhi hai na ki we have had this success sabhi ko kisko award milega ya kuch bhi recognition milegi <laughs> so now now you are forced to come back on that track which you are avoiding because you cannot choose with carrying six seven bodies you cannot choose a very difficult path and then you you been successful though it's all ki you have been able to disperse that so in areas where you are 60 70 kilometers away from your nearest uh, where the where the other forces can come and actually fetch you and give you support wahan tak ka jo stretch hota hai uske andar there have been times we have been ambushed thrice because there's a track you're walking on that track because you have to carry bodies and uh, maybe hamare apne casualties you have to be much more careful uh, when you're carrying your own casualties you carrying your casualties you're coming along that there's a huge stretch and the militants know isi se chal ke gaye hain ek gaon mein dekha ye yahi track hai and then they coming for you thrice we've been ambushed once from behind twice they reached ahead they fired on us and somehow because our drills were good uh, we did not get any casualties but that is why the getting back is because uh, people have you have declared you have announced that you are here and then uh, those guys are belong to that area they know how many tracks or how many roads lead back to where we going and so whatever is predictable that is dangerous before that things are not predictable things are under your control you can go and strike them and you have lived with the militants <laughs> You've yes, been literally I, I, living in their camps and uh, been with yeah, them. I have. How how is that like? Even I don't even know how to articulate the question. Like it's very difficult for me to even fathom. कि आप उनके बीच में कैसे रहे? How how difficult is it? Or how did you manage? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Uh, I'll 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 not say in uh, the rarest of thoughts that something of this kind can be. Uh, can be uh, easy <laughs> this no way this can be easy this was a very strategic kind of uh, operation and i should not go too much into depth yeah but uh, there are things that we have done and uh, you have to become somebody else and i'm sure uh, special forces mein itna zyada ho na ho people like uh, raw and all uh, the intelligence uh, guys this guys again very good and they are doing it day in and out and uh, the lesson known so you have to have a entire backup a entire story you go, you are somebody else you have to forget what you are you have to learn how they eat how they sleep how do they communicate your language everything one word of english in a place like that comes out and <laughs> oh yes yeah matlab aap unke bich you cannot speak is speak in english no at at times uh, in one of the camps i went as a poultry guy who's gone there to look for chicken and buy chicken so you can't uh, no you not uh, convent educated and things like that so the, <laughs> so you have to play your part there the, there were times uh, i had gone actually uh, so we will uh, but yeah it's it's extremely difficult you have to know a lot and then you need support you need support of your guys and uh, support of your guys would in this case mean like if so, things go wrong they have to come and uh, get okay. you know <laughs> yeah yeah right do they check uh, like uh, i i i i think um, it is in in, in jammu and kashmir uh, i think 3 years ago there was a story which was out where they had to kill a terrorist in 3 minutes do you also like you know you're standing next to a terrorist yeah, and yeah, aisa yeah. kuch aapka bhi kuch you had come face to face with ter- i mean you came across uh, i mean you were living in the camp so they were all terrorists already aap koi commander aise face to face aisa kuch interaction i was with them uh those were different type of operations uh this operation that i read this was very beautifully conducted operation jiski aap baat kar rahe hain a brilliant operation but the aim of the operation was to kill the militant there yes. kill the commander uh, mine was a different kind of an operation where we are not trying to kill the militant it was at a strategic level where a particular group was being targeted and we had to win over maximum of the uh of the militants into our side and 
Okay. Yeah, it's it's a different thing. Uh, we should not talk too much about it. But yeah, it, uh, the but, idea was not to uh, kill them. Idea was just not to kill them. Idea was to uh, win their trust. And uh, isn't that more difficult? It is very much. It is very much difficult. To influence them difficult. and bring them back. Yes. Oh, and, hats uh, off, sir. Hats off. It's I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps now. Can't even fathom it. So, which was that operation for which you got Shwari Chakra? Oh, uh, this was uh, again. Uh, Citation. Shwari Chakra. Abhi, uh, you mentioning Major Dikvijay of my unit. He got the Shwari yeah. Chakra, and just today, sometime back, I saw a video of his, uh, and everybody must see it actually. उत्कृष्ट रणनीतिक कुशलता से आपने उपद्रवियों को सफलतापूर्वक लक्षित क्षेत्र की ओर मोड़ते हुए भारी गोलीबारी के बीच एक उपद्रवी को मार गिराया एवं दूसरे को घायल कर इट इज अ रियली प्राउड मोमेंट फॉर माय यूनिट माय पेरेंट्स फॉर एवरीवन अराउंड मी एंड आई रियली फील ब्लेस्ड दैट द एनवायरमेंट माय पेरेंट्स द आर्मी दे हैव गिवन मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी दैट आई वाज ऑपरेटिंग विद वन ऑफ द बेस्ट यूनिट and one of the best team and this award is not uh, for me it is for my team uh, for my unit for everyone whom i was working with and i hope in future also uh, i'll get to explore more adventures which for which i came and i joined army well this guy says that uh, whatever i have got it is not for me it is for my unit 21 para sir on my team and it so well reflects uh, the upbringing of a guy and uh, yes seriously there are so many people uh, who have done so much more who have done so much more and they have not got awarded so uh, so i just i feel i have been lucky humne to kuch bhi nahi kiya tha but chalo god has been kind the seniors have been kind the unit has been kind when we got the award yeah, so this uh, what had happened our team was deployed somewhere else it was uh, i'll not go to naming any of the areas it was it was deployed somewhere else and a situation was created in another state where a particular community was being targeted by one of the militant organization the entire community was being targeted so uh, and it had made lot of news everywhere and that is why special forces were moved we were told ki okay like i was telling you my parents knew that i have moved in that area <laughs> because this this area started uh, getting coming into news and uh, overnight we were moved there ki raat aur raat jo bhi gaadiyan mil rahi hain and we uh, go to that place and uh, that's where within 10 days we uh, we got one success so what had happened was uh, it it's it wasn't just one operation it was a club uh, from two operation uh, first operation i uh, i had gone this is a huge forest where militants were known to be staying and uh, they were this is not where they were targeting they they were, Come move on to another area and target and go and reside. This this is like safe heavens where army had not been and uh, no operations had ever been conducted. There was no deployment of everybody there because it was uh, difficult and nobody and it was very far. And these are not drones. The days when they were drones. No no no. This uh, yeah. drones and all that. Yeah, we've done a lot of operations with drones and all, but this was into one of those. So here I had gone alone with a buddy of mine and two of us. We just went inside. and uh, you was talking about something like checking so we had we had information that there are uh, there were a lot of people who would go there and there were labor camps where they would uh, do all logging they would cut logs and all so number of times these guys would check people who were going into the camps and we had that kind of information but yet we thought let's take the risk we were lucky they did not we were not frisked or anything and uh, we went to a camp and we sat there and we were having a lunch and that is where people were talking in some kind of a coded language though i i did understand the language but uh, no not every dialect or every word so we could make out that there is something fishy here and we got to know okay the immediate there is a camp just next to it less than 2 to 300 meters and that is where some militants have come and they are there right now and there is a huge thing and i was alone here with a buddy and uh, now in jungle you just get lost if it is 2 300 meters also unless you know the precise area we weren't even carrying gpss because if you're frisked your gps comes off which as good as uh, 
at that warrant <laughs> so it was all on my mind okay not with studying i wanted to go and see the place uh, so i made an excuse i couldn't take my buddy because two guys uh, who are not do not belong to that place anybody would get suspicious so I went alone uh, with one of their locals who was there a small boy uh, looking for some shrubs and from a place where i could just see very broadly where exactly it is we made a mental note of uh, how things are and we came back just rushed back immediately to the camp and uh, uh, brigadier yugesh sharma was the team commander then and he was taking a sanik samir one sir 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 for our we have information we have to go bolo ruk ja sanik samir lene de are sir sir we hota rahega we have to go out immediately we have to prepare train and all that and immediately we started making a lay layout of the place and entire briefing and things like that at night we launched that and uh, things did not work out as it should have been a lot of time in combat it happens we had to take a decision and uh, the parties were not exactly in location uh, we had we had uh, decided on a way to go about the operation parties were completely not in location where one of the parties actually saw the militants and it would have been best when everybody is in the area and you open fire and they run and everybody is trapped but then we had to take a decision and uh, in ci it is absolutely understandable that jo dikh gaya pehle sort this out Uh, it's it's a uh, uh, bird in hand is better than to win the bush so we got uh, success here small one and uh, there was subsequently we realized in this area this was just a one night operation yeah we just went and we hit and we came back uh, it doesn't always get so good. nice so we realized that uh, people here uh, they all shikari it is the same area where i was telling you about that uh, guy who was sitting on our head and <laughs> watching us <laughs> to seven eight hours so they would see the footprints and they would know ki the army is here and they are operating so we had to uh, now with shoes we we experimented with civil shoes you start wearing uh, civil shoes but then six eight ten people going out with civil shoes also this uh, those guys wouldn't walk in six eight ten so you know that eight people moving together somebody from outside if it, whether it is a militant band or it is a somebody from the forces so we had to conceal all that we experimented and then we came on ki nothing doing do as the villagers are doing so we got barefoot so again brigadier yogesh sharma was nice when the idea was mooted oh, we discussed that ki sir we will practice going barefoot everybody laughed ki sir kya bakwas kar rahe ho kaise ho sakta hai sir ye matlab we carry 25 kg of weight aur aap keh rahe ho nange pahunch chalenge brigadier yogesh was very good he said ki nahi nahi let's let's try this try karte hain and good about a month हम पीटी से लेकर के वी डिड नॉट पुट ऑन शूज ओनली हम जहाँ जाते थे जो करते थे बिल्कुल इवन वी आई पीज विजिटेड हमारे आस पास वी वेंट बेयर फुट एंड सेल्यूट जय हिंद सर एंड कि ये क्या है इनका ढांचा इतना खराब है दे वुड हैव फेल्ट बैड बट नॉट वी स्टेडिंग वी स्टेड लाइक दैट एंड द फाइनल ऑपरेशन वेन समिंग समथिंग वी हैड अ जेनरिक इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट इस एरिया के अंदर देर इज गोइंग टू बी सम मूवमेंट nothing wo uh, there is going to be a meeting and is going to be held in this particular area nothing better known and i just could not so mai ka chalte hain jungle mein jaake dekhenge and we went in and once we went in we went barefoot nobody got to know nobody had the faintest of the idea ki yahan pe army aayi hui hai char paanch din se operation kar rahi hai i had a guy who was to show us uh, the area he was a civilian source and this guy was what had happened the entire jungle was burnt when the jungle was burnt this guy could not relate because it's completely different and he could not identify ki jahan se aaya hai aur sab uske piche pad rahe hain ki kahan to to bata raha tha hutman milega kahan hai hutman and they would hit him at or come to me ki sab sab jhoot bol raha hai isko kuch nahi pata aise ghuma raha hai aise bhi hote hain bahut jagah aapke sources ghumate rehte hain and leke gaya jaise bhi and mai kaha ki just give them time give them time and for five days i think something like that and uh, we hit a place and we just sit down uh, we saw a hutman we just sat down and we were waiting and then we saw movement and me and do teen bande unke piche gaye to see someone kahi aur se gaya tha kahi aur se gaya tha is is ajnabi jagah mein there should be no one and we went and uh, that's when we got success and uh, 
keep saying this uh, i narrating this incident there is a huge lesson in this ki when a uh, lot of times in life no things are not working as you want it like ye keh rahe hain ki jungle jala hua kisi ko pehchan nahi aa raha kuch nahi aap jungle mein chale ja rahe ho nothing is happening so people want to call it off and uh, lot of people would have just called it off thinking ki kuch nahi ho raha hai bakwas se chalo wapas and specially aap pithu utha kar ke barish mein ghume ja rahe ho theek hai ye ye to aapka continuous na this is like a nagging wife aapke piche pada hua yaar chalo ab chalo ab and still you're saying yaar yeah, let's keep going and so a lot of times uh, you should just perseverance works out you should just keep going and uh, then uh, there is some kind of a chamatkar the miracle works out and you get success i want you're to ask something. you Sorry. yes no 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 it's about this only so aap jab ambush ke liye pahunchte ho i i heard you guys working buddy pairs how uh, how reliant are you on your buddy for the success of like how you firing on yeah haan ji for your life for your life for your life for your life aap apne zindagi ke liye you are dependent on your buddy to matlab aap wherever you go your buddy will also be with you yeah 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 without buddy you know this is a basic principle i learned i had to get shot to learn that but you don't go anywhere alone wherever you go you need a buddy with you <laughs> you you need your buddy you, you need uh, somebody to cover your back you need someone koi commando akela hota hi nahi hai you you need your buddy buddy ke sath mein fir wohi jo attitude mein main aapko keh raha tha aande let it <laughs> let it come on right no uh, can you describe any incident uh, where uh, you had to protect your buddy or your buddy had to protect you or i mean it's always the case right ऐसा कुछ हुआ होता है कि कोई मिसकम्युनिकेशन बिकॉज़ यू बोथ हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड ईच अदर वेरी वेल राइट हाउ हाउ डज इट वर्क योर एंटायर स्क्वाड योर एंटायर टीम दे स्टार्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग यू एंड या स्पेशली विद द बॉडी बट ऐसे एग्जैक्टली पति के लिए मतलब हमारे उसमें हुए हैं मतलब वन ऑफ द ऑफिसर्स ही वाज गेटिंग टू एग्जुबरेंट एंड ही वाज फायरिंग एंड देन ही वाज जस्ट पुल डाउन बाय द बॉडी की सब मरेगा तो डाउन and yeah and he just survived things like that but uh, personally mere sath uh, matlab my buddies have probably been uh, too professional but aise aise wala encounter i i can't recall maybe zyada zor dunga to i may think of something but <laughs> nahi uh, I, i don't like recall anything yeah yeah i mean you would recall it only if there was a misunderstanding right <laughs> i uh, you you been mentioning weapons repeatedly अब बड़े वेपन तो आप लेके जा नहीं सकते हैं वो भी अलाउड होते हैं या कि जाऊंगा मतलब मैं भी बहुत स्ट्रांग हूं बट वी शुड दैट्स ऑन द लाइक अ साइड वी डोंट प्लान टू एक्चुअली गो एंड एंगेज हैंड टू हैंड फाइट के अंदर सो योर ऑलवेज डबली आर्म डबली आर्म मतलब यू यू गॉट टू वेपन्स एट लीस्ट ऑन यू इफ वन वेपन फेल्स यू नीड टू इट्स लाइक जब आप जंप करते हैं तो मेन पैराशूट के साथ में आपका रिजर्व पैराशूट होता है सो दैट इज लाइक अ रिजर्व इफ दिस थिंग डजंट वर्क देन दिस थिंग वर्क्स and that is apart from the knife it's, knife is not counted <laughs> my knife I, would be like uh, yeah so you need uh, at least a pistol and uh, and uh, assault rifle this is the standard uh, that is standard is uh, for jungles and uh, weapons actually depend on completely jo pura game hai wo weapons ke around hi hoti hai most of the planning and preparation it depends on the terrain jis ka task ke liye aap ja rahe hain uske upar aap kaun se weapons le kar ke jayenge the entire thing rotates uh, revolves around uh, your weapons there have been an operation where we were six guys and out of them four of us were carrying snipers and me with a assault rifle i could fire as good as a sniper <laughs> of course wonder with this ha wo area aisa tha that area was vast and that area we had a failed operation uske andar we were hiding in a place for good about 6 7 days and we were looking that's a open area 
आप समझ रहे ओपन एरिया के अंदर एक गांव के पास में एक स्मॉल कपल ऑफ ट्रीज एंड लिटिल लिटिल कवर्ड कैन ऑफ एरिया एंड ऑल कंसील एंड हाइडिंग आउट देयर एंड दूर तक मोर देन अ किलोमीटर अवे वी सॉ वी गॉट गुड स्पोटोस्कोप एंड वी आइडेंटिफाई द कमांडर वी आइडेंटिफाई द कमांडर वी आइडेंटिफाई टेररिस्ट देयर वर थ्री ऑफ देम एंड वी वर हियर दोस गाइस वर देयर एंड दे वर मूविंग लाइक दिस एंड एट दिस रेंज यू कैन नॉट एंगेज एंड ये मैं आपको स्नाइपर वाला जो बताया था ना ये उससे पहले था तब तक वी आर जस्ट कैरिंग वन और टू स्नाइपर्स इसके बाद इन दैट एरिया वी स्टार्टेड एवरीबॉडी की स्नाइपर की यार आगे भाई यू सी दैट 900 मीटर्स 1 किलोमीटर वही मैं मार दूं अच्छा ये तो वी सॉ देम मूविंग लाइक दिस एंड वी वर इन अ कंसिग्नेटर द मोमेंट यू गेट आउट फ्रॉम हियर एवरीबॉडी सीज यू एंड दोस गाइस हैव गॉट 2 किलोमीटर टू रन अवे या बट यू कैन कीप सिटिंग तो वी गॉट आउट फ्रॉम हियर एंड धीरे-धीरे धीरे टेकिंग द कर्व ऑफ द ग्राउंड इट्स इज वेरी इजी कि कमांडो ऐसे करता है वैसे करता है बट एक्चुअली जब ग्राउंड में करना होता है हम भी तो इंसान ही है एंड हम छुपते छुपाते वी वर ट्राइंग टू दे वर मूविंग लाइक दिस एंड वी वुड ट्राई एंड इंटरसेक्ट देम एंड मे बी व्हेन एवर देयर इन रेंज 2 300 गुड रेंज वेयर वी कैन एक्चुअली न्यूट्रलाइज देम वी वुड हैव रीच्ड एंड वी वुड हैव एंगेज्ड और मैं करीब 300 मीटर में आई हैड सो मच ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस इन माय सेल्फ 300 मीटर पे पहुंचे एंड आई पिकड अप माय वेपन मैं का इसको तो खत्म कर देते हैं एवरीबॉडी दैट गाय वाज रनिंग द एंटायर शो दैट गाय वाज ही वाज रनिंग ही वाज कंट्रोलिंग एट लीस्ट फाइव और डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स ऑफ दैट स्टेट एंड आई पॉइंट पिकड अप माय वेपन आई अलाइंड देयर इज अ रेड डॉट इन दैट टेबल एंड यू अलाइंड दैट डॉट एंड आई वाज अबाउट टू पुल द ट्रिगर दिस इज माय बॉडी ही इज अगेन वेरी एक्सपीरियंस्ड गाय एक्सट्रीमली एक्सपीरियंस्ड एंड ही हेल्प मी साहब जल्दीबाजी मत करो सारे मिलेंगे डोंट स्पॉइल द ऑपरेशन डाउन मैंने कहा हां सही बोल रहे हैं तो मैंने उसको नहीं मारा आई ऑलवेज रिग्रेट मार देना चाहिए एंड मैं कहा चलो एंड वी रश्ड अहेड और वो करके उसमें क्या हुआ कि देयर वर पीपल वर्किंग इन द फील्ड समवेयर एल्स एंड दे सॉ अस बस वी हैड टू रीच वी हैड टू रन वी हैड टू रीच टू अ प्लेस एंड जहां से एंड दिस गाय स्टार्टेड शाउटिंग इशारे करने लगा दो गैस सो एंड देन दे जस्ट रश्ड एंड दे जस्ट वेन एंड गॉट इन टू अ हटमेंट द हटमेंट दैट एंड अब हम कितने वी वर अबाउट फाइव और सिक्स ऑफ आस इन दैट एरिया पूरे हटमेंट को रात को हमने घेर लिया दो इधर दो उधर तीन इधर एंड वी कैप वेटिंग की इसके अंदर से निकलने ही दे दूंगा वेट इन द नाइट रात को एक मोटरसाइकिल वाला आया अब सिक्स आदमी के साथ में इतना ह्यूज एरिया हाउ डू यू कवर इट्स You cannot cover. So, एक मोटरसाइकिल वाला आया था उसका किसी का भाई का शादी या कुछ था तो आ, मैं उसके मोटरसाइकिल में बैठा रात को मोटरसाइकिल ऑन करके आया उस डूइंग ए पेरीमीटर एटलीस्ट टू डिटर एनी वन ट्राइंग टू स्केप बट वी डिट नॉट गेट एनी वन वी जस्ट मिस थिंग दैट इज अ गुड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ बडी Not being helpful then. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I get uh, it. Success, uh, success has many fathers, and uh, what is that? And uh, failure का कोई वो नहीं होता. This is just one of the operation where we missed. ऐसे तो बहुत सारे we've been close and we have missed and things like that. Uh, and uh, you mentioned snipers and what was but, your favorite uh, weapon? Max- Uh, this is what i was actually trying to explain ki depends uh, it depends on the task yeah the the kind of operation that you have planned what kind of a weapon you need to use i mean there have been when i was talking about those covert kind of an operation when you when you go out alone or with a buddy into some place and uh, you'd always like to carry a submachine gun so you cannot carry a assault rifle so we had those uzis uzi is a very good weapon So with a rate of fire of 1400 rounds per minute and uh, the only fear was there were two fears in fact the moment you press the trigger before you know the entire magazine is uh, gone because it's such a huge uh, rate of fire <laughs> yes and the second is it's uh, the grip is uh, slightly it's it's not natural there's a secondary grip to it the say a safety so you need to hold it and press that and uh, it, it doesn't come naturally because all other weapons that you're using you're not uh, unless you are just using uzi so we really practiced well and uh, so uh, this is a submachine gun 
then you always need to carry your pistol. So you know, you know, we had Browning. Browning were way bad. So Sio had a Beretta, and he was kind enough to give it to me because <laughs> I, I was in getting into such kind of operations so frequently. So I was using a Beretta then, and when you go into jungles, absolutely jungles, when you need an assault rifle, uh, very close with uh, VZ-55. VZ-55 is a good uh, weapon. Yeah. Somehow I uh, I didn't like the AK-47 because its safety cat is that you have to leave your uh, pistol grip and go and put it on ready and then get back in. It should not be. When you pick up your weapon, by the time it is up, you should be able to fire it. You can shoot the pillar with your safety catch. Tabor was a very good weapon, especially the sight of the Tabor and the concept of night sight uh, that can be mounted on the Tabor was very good. It's, uh, Tabor, we were, uh, we, were, uh, we were shooting, we would practice shooting without closing our eyes. It's it's called alignment firing where you, you because in battlefield you need to see everything. Without closing your eye means batting your eye. Yeah. Bilkul, okay. No, no, no. Jo aapko jata hai ki aap left eye ko close karenge, aap hmm. and then there is something called the sight alignment, then you place, uh, then you take it to a sight picture. Rear side ke beach mein se four side tip ko lagate where you put it on the target and get your eyes back onto the four side tip and then slowly you squeeze the trigger. So ye sab hum soche bina we would keep all uh, Arjun Arjun wala example I would keep giving people Arjun uh, he would focus only on the fish's eye that was the fish not bird I think fish yeah if parrot that? parrot's eye yeah I parrot, think this is parrot. parrot. Yeah, <laughs> You're right, sir. I think Sri Ram also. Sri Ram, I think, focused on the fish. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I got your point. So whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but point is, yeah. So wahan jo jata tha, that is good for marksmanship when you're fighting in Olympics. But when you're in combat, you need to be aware of the situation around you. You need to be... Somebody's thrown a grenade. Somebody's got up from there. Or you see somebody moving or running from there. And you suddenly see there's... Some... So you can't close your eyes. You need to keep both your eyes open and then you engage. So even before the tables and uh, we've got these collimator sites where you see a red dot, you could keep both your eyes open. This came much later. Uh, we were firing with uh, VZs, we were firing with AKs and without closing our eyes, with both eyes open, we were just engaging and uh, good uh, range uh, we were able to cover. And what I was mentioning was with the, uh, with the tables coming, tables had an edge with their sights. The sights were very good. Yeah, where you did not actually naturally have to close your eyes, you could keep, you need to keep both your eyes open. It's more uh, peripheral visions around. You're seeing everything around you. You're more much more oriented into the battlefield, and you just have a red dot. You align that red dot. No, either either, dekhna, and just pull your trigger. And especially with the night sights, all you had to do is uh, place an additional night sight over this and look through the night sight. It's as good as a day sight. And uh, so Tevor, that manner was very good. The only problem with Tevor was a 5.56. Martha nahi hai, yaar. Matlab, wo jakhmi karne ka. It's, it's objective was to, uh, was to injure someone. If the objective is to injure someone, kaise marega? So, that is the only thing. But I personally carried uh, the Tevor and really enjoyed that. Uh, and when we moved into NHG, NHG was, uh, we carried MP5s. And there are a whole lot of different, and of course, the pistol was dropped. And uh, MP5 is a good weapon again. It's, it, it was one of the first ones, Hecker and Kochke, who launched a submachine gun variant. And uh, that's a when you're entering a room, you don't want to have so many bullets uh, ricocheting and uh, flying around with a with a 7.62 round. So you need somebody with a lesser caliber, with a little lesser uh, charge, lesser power, and that is why uh, you need to come on uh, submachine guns. And nine you need a smaller gun where you're maneuvering nine mm. Yes, when you're maneuvering rooms and entering doors and all that, so you need to be much more comfortable, have a grip on your weapon. So, assault rifle isn't the best choice for a room intervention kind of an operation. So it it all depends. What I'm trying to explain is all depend on the kind of uh, operation that uh, you're going for. We've got uh, PKMGs, PK machine gun. Uske bina to operation jati nahi the when we were in northeast. Yes, rocket launcher, rocket launcher, of course, uh, initially. Yeah, PKG is very heavy. Where do you go? 
<laughs> not just that rocket launcher rocket launcher matlab you walking somewhere and somebody uh, some guy opens fire just one round of uh, rocket launcher and thak sub silent so those those were the main weapons that would save the entire troop or the team uh, going into operation to so, baki to apne paas assault rifle to aap uh, kuch bhi carry kar do matlab ye patar 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 karke exactly <laughs> When you have got a good guy on peak, I sit down and put a belt at ta 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 ta. Nikal ta hai toh. That makes sense. And I'm yeah. glad you mentioned 5.56 and 0.62. And up, ye controversy rehti hai hamesh ta hai ki 0.62. Ye bullet ki sizes hai basically. I don't know if yeah, anyone listening. Yeah, caliber of the bullet. And the world is moving back to uh, 0.62. We've been to 5.56. The idea was ki 5.56 is going to injure someone, and then there are going to be some stupid people who will come back to get them, so you can injure many more, and when more people will keep coming, and they'll get keep getting injured. So somehow, when CIA it doesn't work out, one guy injured, he he injures uh, five of yours again. So it's, it's as it is said, a good militant is a dead militant. So you <laughs> you have to help him die. The sooner you do it, the better it is for him. And so for you, of course. Definitely. Uh, this is another one of the audience questions, and they keep comparing Indian commanders to foreign commanders. How do you like? I, I in 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 our conversations before I I interviewed you, you mentioned Spetsnaz with a lot of respect. So I I want to know that you uh, like whom do you look up to as a commando? Who which are the other commando forces you look up to? All of them. Trust me. Trust me. I, I, I would. Uh, this is what I was coming to. He, all special forces everywhere across the globe, they are all people to reckon with. It's not. They are not simple guys. Okay. They are the best of the you know uh, warriors chosen from their uh, units. So it will not be fair for me to say that we are good or that we are good. Their exposures are different. Our exposures have been different. As I was talking, your 21 paras exposure is completely different from nine paras. If you want to say that I am better than nine paras, or nine paras can be better than that, yeah. Even uh, why compare with other? Uh, even our Garuds and the Marcos and all, it will be uh, it will be uh, naive of me to say that we are better than somebody else. And especially, I look up to all the special forces, the seals, uh, the the Israeli special forces. they also good you've seen uh, the kind of operation that uh, the israelis have pulled through i mean that's just not uh, you see the kind of caliber they have so up you need to respect all uh, space nas all of them you have to respect because they will do something jo otherwise it is not possible even to reach that kind of a level and if you do not respect if if i say ki hum bahut acche hain baaki sab to है तो उससे क्या होगा कि यू विल लिमिट योर लिमिट योर स्कोप ऑफ लर्निंग सो आई ऑलवेज रिस्पेक्ट एवरी वन आई इवन रिस्पेक्ट एस एस जी पाकिस्तानी हमारे दुश्मन में तो क्या हुआ मतलब ठीक है द चाइनीज स्पेशल फोर्सेज दे हैव वन हेल लॉट ऑफ कॉम्पिटिशन मतलब उनके साथ बट दे हैव वन होल लॉट ऑफ कॉम्पिटिशन so trust me uh, i would say we are very good and uh, they are equally good and it is this fraternity that i really uh, sincerely respect and mai to dushman ko bhi respect karta hu and i won't hesitate twice to kill somebody <laughs> if i have to but uh, yeah respect apni jagah hai and uh, anybody who has been in a special forces unit uh, i i sincerely respect i do not saying ki baki am forces ko respect nahi karta hu i, I everybody's got his place and we respect all of them but i hope that answers uh, so it is incorrect to compare it is incorrect to compare uh, hamare uh, it is uh, what are special forces what are the armed forces armed forces uh, it is as it is said it is a last, last mile of uh, foreign affairs yeah it is the ministry of foreign it is an extension of the ministry of foreign affairs so this completely uh, indian special forces or indian armed forces hamari soch wo abhi global nahi hai we don't want to it's nowhere in our intent 
सो इसीलिए आर स्पेशल फोर्सेस हैव नॉट गॉन एंड ऑपरेटेड इन अफगानिस्तान सीरिया इराक एंड दो स्पेसेस बिकॉज वी डोंट हैव टू हमारा वो उसमें नहीं है बट हाउ कैन यू से समबडी हु इज गॉट दैट काइंड ऑफ एन एक्सपोजर कि ही इज नॉट गुड यू सी यू लर्न हाउ डू यू लर्न यू लर्न फ्रॉम एन एक्सपोजर यू यू बी टू यू गो टू अ प्लेस इट्स अ चैलेंजिंग प्लेस एंड यू इंटरेक्ट विद देम you lose some and then you kill a few and then that's how you grow and you learn so this those lessons uh, we any day we have to take from someone i i that's how i look that. at it <laughs> it's so understandable and and uh, itna respect aap jab show karte hain i am assuming people will also understand kitna risk aap log lete hain what is the rich, riskiest situation you have ever been in and have you ever shared it with your family like immediately after it ki aapne baad mein dheere se bataya nahi nahi family ko to kaha family to kahi aur rehte hain and aap to operation kiye ja rahe hain if we start uh, discussing with family ki hum kya kya karte hain especially jab karte the to trust me i would have been non para volunteer long time back <laughs> what is going to allow me to do just go all out there and uh, have my way so ye ek nasha hota hai aur pe uh, just pushing your luck and maybe doing this is i i think this is a very difficult question that you have asked kyunki <laughs> not one operation i don't know how many times we have been exposed to uh, such scenarios me my entire team and uh, very difficult but then i can tell you uh, as i was mentioning manipur was bad uh, i uh, there is a operation when i keep saying that we walked into a entire field of id like uh, even on my tech talk and all it is it has a mention where the second the first scout goes the second we were close we were going to raid two camps there were two camps on two spurs like this we were on one of them and the second one was kanna nectar he is uh, the gentleman who conducted the surgical strikes he is a kirti chakra shore chakra yeah my team was being led by colonel thongan jyotin singh he is a shore chakra bard and we were going and the first scout goes the second scout he just blows up like this uh, i see him about उटे we raided the two camps and uh, we had a of course we had a casualty the next day we were walking back along the way i was telling you along the way we were we fired upon thrice we went and uh, we cleared most of manipur i mean 21 palaces cleared most of manipur otherwise things were just beyond control and uh, one of the last areas that we were clearing the militants had left of course there is a huge operation that was happening and they had booby trapped the place in such a manner the camp that we were going to target had more than 1000 ids all over more than 1000 ids every door had a id the entire track where we were walking every place was i mother you can't imagine but we had trained so well not one casualty we had even it, it was like um, the infantry and the other forces were holding uh, this and we were going inside we were clearing the area these would come and fetch up we were going back holding the area clearing and then these would fetch up so the other forces that were there in every unit there were more than 15 to 20 casualties in one of the operations was a very dear friend of mine he lost the leg uh, the senior to to me from uh, Three jack, and they were showing he lost a leg, and uh, very unfortunate, very spirited guy. He commanded the unit after that. I mean, amazing guy, and uh, yeah. So what I was telling you was, we're going into this operation, and not one casualty. The closest we came to uh, having a casualty is uh, when uh, again, way uh, uh, this guy was a youngster. I will not name. He was a youngster then. He's a senior officer now. and he was a youngster and he was on probation and we had we had one motto across he never do what is expected bas ek guru mantra 
do not do what is expected if you are expected to enter from the door don't enter from the door if you are expected to walk on the track don't enter don't walk on the track if you are expected to come through the gate don't enter from the gate this was the guru mantra to sabke dimag mein simple tha ki gate se jana hai nahi jana hai fence chad kar gaye theek hai do the those huts that we made to and we saw ki darwaze ke upar id rakha hai table ke upar book rakha hai uske niche id rakha hai aise ids and when we were coming back they had anticipated ki to itne ideas laga ids laga diye and then the huge casualty helicopter will come field ke beech mein they had dug up a place usme pura tirpal bichha kar ke usme id rakha tha and us samay tak to we were so used to seeing ids all across i was like ye kya matlab id hai to i was leading and said ki id hai just ignored and we kept moving with burnt the entire place so this guy was last the gentleman i was talking about he said sir sir main mai isko करके देखता हूँ मेरे को एक बार देखना है प्लीज तो विद गॉट सो यू टू कर ले एंड विदाउट इविन स्टॉपिंग यू एंड डैट वॉज अज लास्ट एंड उस लिटल कॉम्प्लीसेंट बिकॉज वी हैड सीन सो मेनी आईडीज तो उसने ना जो ड्रिल है कि रस्सा बांध के ऐसे करके आप पीछे आओगे पूरा मुंडी डाउन करके तो यू एज एक्चुअली लुकिंग लाइक दिस एंड हेलमेट एंड एवरी थिंग ब्लोन ऑफ नॉट हेलमेट द कैप एंड ऑल एंड यू वेरी क्लोज टू गेटिंग आया बाद में कि सर बच गया मैं बट आपकी बात अगली बार से मानूंगा सर दिस दिस वॉज अगेन वन ऑफ द क्लोज टाइम वेरी क्लोज टू दैट देन देर वॉज अनदर वन ऊपर से स्टॉकिंग अबाउट इट कपल ऑफ दिस बैक अनंद ऑफ द पॉडकास्ट जनरल कुलार है जस्ट टेकन ओवर गोइंग फॉर एन ऑपरेशन एंड अगेन द सिमिलर कॉन्सेप्ट दैट दिस वॉज अ हेलीबोर्न ऑपरेशन वे स्पेशल फोर्सेज वे टू गो बाय हेलीकॉप्टर्स या तो दिस इज वन ऑफ द रेयर ऑपरेशन पूरा यूनिट एंड इन्फेंट्री ऊपर से ऐसे मार्च करके दिल टेक एंड हम पीछे जाकर के विल हैव स्टॉप्स एंड विल क्लियर द एरिया एंड दे विल कम एंड फेच अप लाइक दैट अब हेलीकॉप्टर्स का एयर फोर्स का अजीब वो है कि हेलीकॉप्टर्स विल नॉट गो टू अ प्लेस अनलेस द हेलीपैड हैज बीन सिक्योर्ड एंड दैट वाज सो मच इनटू द इंटीरियर्स हु इज गोइंग टू सिक्योर दैट प्लेस एंड लाइक लक वुड हैव इट और माय किस्मत आई वाज टोल्ड कि आई आई शुड गो एंड विद मी वाज Colonel Subhash Punia, he is a Kirti Chakra. So both of us went, and we had to cross a huge river. Not uh, going to the details of the names and all that. And then there was a ridge line. We carried the boats. We crossed over. We crossed over the river, and then we identified the good helipad where the helicopters can come. We the helicopters came, and from there, uh, Jal Kular was actually monitoring, and we saw a camp which we were going to target. And there were different parties. Closing in on the camp from different place, and हमारे वहाँ से Bhupi sir's party. I was there. I had a podcast with Bhupi sir. You know, with Colonel Vijay Nair. Yeah, he was a gentleman. My trip was to stay back because I had already four days पहले से जाकर के I had uh, they were all exhausted, but I wanted to go into contact. So I said, "Kis sir, आपके साथ जाऊँगा." And I was going with his. The militants are there, and General. Uh, is guiding ki, okay this track pe aap ja rahe, usi ke upar militants and they are looking towards you only so very now you, you can expect being fired upon and then suddenly these guys see uh, prrr, okay, the entire place is completely riddled with bullet then they open up full blast upar se with machine guns and with uh, there this lathors they like the multi grenade launchers that we have they go they, they, they throw grenades and that go and blast and then pure patte gir raha part 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 everywhere and there is a rpc round boom oh <laughs> and there of them upar se expect kar rahe hain and uh, somehow we went and uh, we were successful we got success and we cleared the entire place this all uh, I, i don't know kitne and the worst of all uh, would be when uh, we were talking about the covert operations ye sab to alag hai the covert operation mein i had to go alone uh, to fetch a militant commander a militant commander had come we were trying to establish a contact with him and uh, i'm not going to too much of i was i was myself behaving as a militant we were with a guy who was helping us he was a militant and he had not surrendered yet he still as a militant he was helping us we were reaching out to different militant commanders so we laid it not a trap exactly we uh, arranged for a meeting and this guy was there The, the guy who is helping us he goes and establishes contact and then he tells me ki and you know what about four to five guys 
and i was told ki aap you leave your weapon you come inside you know there's a militant commander with his bodyguard there inside you just know this guy who's helping you you can he's not your buddy you can bet your life on him right and then he calls you inside without your weapon and you don't know he can hold you in a hostage and he knows there are five guys out there and they can get away you don't know how things happen there have been incidents like this and this i would say was one where my heart was racing the fastest beating the fastest and somehow we got him we got him uh, we got him to come and join us not not as a kill or something so i went ahead i made friends and he became a fan and we did good operations <laughs> uske baad bhi so i think too many stories i i i i i i really <laughs> like the way you explained you make it sound so easy like as if you know literally like you say cake walk but you know jab aap explain kar i can't even fa- me ko imagine karna mushkil ho raha i can't fathom what must have been actually happening and uh it's um, i i aap you you laughing it out i mean i don't know probably this is what the attitude of a commando is the confidence and the ease to lead such operations i think i got that answer now finally after the podcast <laughs> is over it it, uh, it speaks badly of me i could not give you an answer then when you asked <laughs> no, no 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 not that sir no no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh i i asked you for one attitude i think yeah. I, i found multiple points got quite a few ki, what what puts you guys apart from others seriously uh, we were enjoying life it was not like work jo kehta hai na ki passion wala kaam work we were uh, everybody we were just enjoying life we were risking our life but we were enjoying we were getting some kind of a good uh, kick out of uh, all this and uh, that is what i i would say i'm missing after uh, of uh, hung my uniform <laughs> so one last question do you think india should have mercenary groups like Why black not? water and wagner why not i mean whenever india decides uh, you should let them know i am available <laughs> but whenever india decides to do so i am available i mean why not india times are changing you see times are changing india is a rising power it needs to assert its uh, place rightful place in in the global environment think and i so get see, it i was just follow, i was just uh, following how our defense industry is growing so army has got its own limitations we must encourage we must uh, go out there and uh, the mercenaries i wouldn't call them mercenaries the private military contractors on this they've got a decent place Uh, they help they are also an extension of uh, the armed capability of the country it is the muscles of a country mm-hmm. i mean and especially with the new role that uh, globally we are we are taking on without that uh, we handicap you mean it's a force multiplier like mercenary yeah. group will be a force yes any day it is a force multiplier Yes, yes, yes. It is a force multiplier. Everything should not be looked at. I have uh, very extensively studied on the black water. Black water. There is a lot of negative propaganda along black water, but what they have done is not easy. They have been they have been uh, criticized for opening fire, and uh, you face a situation like that. They were looking after the entire logistics in Iraq of their army. There were VIPs going there. In Kashmir, it is difficult. ki vip aa rahe you have to look after you have to ensure that he lands at the airport and he reaches uh, uh, the secured area uh, how does he come there and beech mein kya hai wahan pe to anybody can stop your vehicle and open fire how, how do you prevent anybody from doing that and if a vehicle is come and it is stopped your vehicle everybody i can actually relate to that you sitting on your edges of your own it's after your life and it is not just your life your, your survival instincts uh, take on you, you're not thinking at that moment you're looking at everything from ye ho sakta hai ye ho sakta hai can this guy can this guy can this guy can this guy because moving at 80 hours 90 hours 90 kilometers per hour and at that speed you're looking at those guys they have done good matlab i, I won't say and yahan fault se nahi hoti kya galtiyan 
पॉज से भी तो हो जाती है गलतियां देर देर आर टाइम्स इनोशन पीपल हैव लॉस्ट देयर लाइफ इट इज रिग्रेटेड दे हैव आल्सो रिग्रेटेड बट बट इट इज इट इज लुक डाउन अपॉन आई डोंट थिंक दैट इज समथिंग टू लुक डाउन अपॉन दैट इज द काइंड ऑफ विदाउट देम यूएस आर्मी सस्टेनेबल शुड हैव बीन वेरी मच डिफिकल्ट दे वुड हैव बीन एबल टू अचीव व्हाटएवर दे हैव इन ऑल दीस ऑपरेशंस आई i'm so content with the podcast that i've had with you because i like i one i've been able to cover all the questions that audience had sent to me and two you pretty much uh, align with what all, all the veterans have been saying about mercy group and aapne un sab pe na ek final ek stamp bhi de diya ki ha we should have a mercy group and and you explained it beautifully everything i'm i'm so glad and i i'm extremely sorry i took so much time but thank you so much this is excellent oh i really enjoyed thank you so much lekin it was wonderful uh, interacting with you and uh, thank you so much I'm to you and uh, really... my best wishes to uh, the team of resonant news to you too sir to your ventures yeah. all your ventures and your endeavors good day sir thank you so much once again thank you you too have a good day